Welcome to God with George Ortega. This is episode number 88. I'm recording it on Tuesday, February 23rd at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, so apparently God would like me to, um, to do at least this episode, and who knows, maybe some in the future, without any preparation. You know, I have absolutely no idea what um, God wants me to talk about because God hasn't told me directly. Because, you know, I'm, all right, all right, so now we're there. So now God apparently wants me to talk about how whatever we say, about whatever it is, and in whatever way, it's always God basically imparting these thoughts to us. And, um, and it just, you know, having that perspective just uh, shifts our, our, our understanding of who we are in relation to God. Um, you know, it, it, moving from like an us and God or us and them kind of a thing to, 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 to a, a, a we, I mean, like, a, you know, uh, it's like, <laughs> we are, we are God. I mean, God is us. I mean, and um, that's, that's something that, um, that we haven't, I don't think, as a world um, arrived at, as an understanding. Now, I think, you know, I mean, yes, we, we do have this, this very, um, common understanding that God is everywhere. So obviously, logically, God is in us, within us, you know, the imminent nature of God. But um, it's different. That's different than, than feeling that, like, you know, that our thoughts are God's thoughts. <laughs> that, that, like, you know, everything we do is because God is compelling us. And naturally, you know, and, and you know, I, I, this, this, you know, this exploration of God really, you know, can't avoid having a lot to do with this this notion of like what our human will is about you know um you know naturally the uh, the, the the topic of free will um but so and and so i i think you know all right when i think about this this you know this idea of like god being out there and separate from us um it may be that christianity um, was attempting perhaps a, a, a first step toward a, a different kind of understanding. What I'm trying to say is that like Jesus, you know, was, was held by some um, to be God. You know, so like nobody else is God but Jesus. He's special and all. And um, so it's not just that, that, that we and then Jesus basically were manifesting God's thoughts, but, but, um, but again, Jesus was different. So, I mean, like, so that might have been a step in, in, in a more accurate, I think, understanding that um, it's not just Jesus who's God. It's like we're all God. Everything is God. And that's, you know, again, like, that's kind of like bringing this logic of, of God being everything and everywhere, you know, and applying it to everything, every, everyone. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, that's just speculative, but, you know, it could be that, that we're all eventually, and the idea behind, well, um, I think, well, see, the, the problem with that, I suppose, is like Jesus was supposed to have had special powers, but, you know, maybe it's not a problem anyhow, because like, you know, Moses and, and, and other of the prophets had these special powers also. So, but, but the, the, the key distinction, the key point is that, yes, we are all God because God is everything. How could we not be God? And God is imparting all these thoughts. Um, but yeah, the, the key is that we're just not the part of God that decides what what thoughts we will um, we will convey or, or think. Of. Okay. Um, so, all right. I'm looking at the clock and it's like 23. Um, minutes left. <laughs> All right, what else does God want um, said right now? Um, I don't know. I um, God had me obsessing like last night and this morning. I, I got to get a, um, 
I'm getting good at, at, at bass guitar, right? And so the next step is like, I want to be a studio musician, but I think it'd be good to get some practice um, with a band. So I'm, I'm getting to, you know, to, um, to know some people that, that know that they, they do play music. And I want to hopefully eventually get good enough to jam with them, to, to play with them. So, you know, I've got, to, I, I actually, you know, I've just been playing bass for um, about 19 months or so. And so I'm, I'm actually playing it through my, um, my regular guitar amp, which is, you know, bass amp is a bit different, um, a thicker cone or whatever. But anyway, so like God has me obsessing about that. And, and like, it, it's interesting because like last night, yeah, before going to sleep, I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm looking online, you know, comparing, trying to get what, which amp should I get? You know, how much should I pay? What, what kind of, what, what is the brand? And like, it's not, <laughs> all right, this is a bit of a diversion, but like, you know, this is like the weird stuff that God does with me, uh, at least sometimes. Uh, there's, there's a, an amp called the Fender Rumble. Okay. The whole series of amps, you know, with the Rumble, you know, um, trademark name, whatever. And, and like, I, this is weird. It's like, this is, this is not me. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's a, like, God apparently has me thinking that like, back when I was growing up, um, and, and maybe in movies and stuff, there, there were like references to, to rumbles where, where a, a street gang would, would get together and a group of, you know, guys would, would fight another group of guys from some other part of town, whatever, and they would call it a rumble. So I'm thinking to myself, I can't, I can't in good conscience buy an amp that that has Rumble in the name. Now naturally, Rumble has refers to you know there's a Rumble seat of a car, you know that has different you know meanings. But um, but beside that, beside that, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be like you know. It really, this was, this was like, you know, like one o'clock last night. I'm, I'm like looking through these and I, it felt, you know, like a compulsion. It's like, you know, I got to do this. Gotta, and um, I guess what I'm trying to um, point to is that it's, it's an irony. It's surreal that even though God has us think certain thoughts at certain times and, uh, has us um, do certain things. Curiously, you know, perplexingly, God will not have us be pleased that we're doing. Again, we don't like to obsess about things, you know, whether it's like buying a guitar amp or whatever. It's just, you know, so so it's just it's um, it's another kind of these um, aspects of 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 of, of the implications of of, of God you know, basically um, manifesting her will through us. Okay, so what else? Um, all right, so now I just like, so I refer to God as her, and so I'm going to just go with that. And that's like, you know, that's how this show just progresses. <laughs> it's just like, I say something, something comes to mind. I'm like, this is what we all do. This sort of, so like, you know, this idea of... Um, of God as her, I, I think it's important. I think it's, you know, it's not trivial. It's not incidental or, or not, it's it's not inconsequential. You know, um, if we've been seeing God or, or just using the pronouns, you know, he, him, his, um, to refer to God, you know, that's got to shape our, um, our conception of God. Um, and there, by our conception of ourselves, you know, we being in the image of God. So, I, you know, you have to wonder how this works with, with, with a guy. You know, I'm a guy, and so I find him. A man's, you know, God's a, a, a guy, so, like, I can identify with that. I kind of wonder what women do with that, you know, you know, in, in, in God's image and God is a guy. You know, I don't know. But, um, but I really believe that, um, that in this world, that, um, I mean, like, we, we guys have done a lot of good, you know, we, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, but, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before in, in, in other episodes, you know, the, the one way we're very different from women is that we're much more aggressive, you know, and, and this is like, you know, I think we're, 
we're in a time, thank, thankfully, you know, within the democracies of the world, we don't, we don't wage wars between democracies anymore. I mean, like, that's something I learned a while back. You know, democracies don't, just don't fight each other anymore. And this is an evolution of our culture, of our society, of our civilization. And, um, and so, but that's like sociopolitical, geopolitical. Um, it may be that, um, well, no, it certainly is, that we're evolving into a time where, again, to connect this to God, God is, is, has planned, has willed, that we, we all become less aggressive, we, we, we guys, the, the, you know, society. And, and, you know, there are mechanisms for that, naturally laws against aggression, against aggressive behavior, you know. Um, but, but this may be, you know, I hope it is actually. I hope, like, I hope this takes off. I hope, like, you know, now, you know, it might be, not be practical in some ways. You know, you have to, like, you know, just create all these prayer books, change the names of, you know. So that, you know, in, in this economy, I'm not sure we want to do that. But, uh, but to, to, to have that you know, at least as an experiment, a, a shift in the convention, you know, uh, we refer to God intentionally as she, her, hers, um, in order to uh, summon up a different conception of God than we're accustomed to, a different conception of ourselves, perhaps, that we're accustomed to. So, um, I don't know if God's going to do that. You know, God apparently had me. Um, that's it. Yeah. All right. Whatever. So like, we've talked enough about that. Um, now what else? So. All right. Well, I was glad to have Andy join me um, yesterday. Um, and we're, we're going to have to have some serious discussions. I, I told him, like, he believes Jesus is the Messiah. I said, no, you can't be on the show touting that because that's kind of like touting the idea that climate change doesn't exist. You know, it's like, and, you know, and, you know, with all due respect to Christians, I mean, I just personally, I just believe they got that wrong. So, um, but, but so like we're doing an episode yesterday and it was fun, but, but, you know, the, we have to address the, um, this idea that, that Andy takes the, the Torah, the Bible, literally, you know, and um, so, so yeah, we, we, um, you know, my, my learning is that, that even they, you know, the, the authors of the, the, the books of the Bible um, were aware um, that, that they were just like speaking in metaphor, that they were, you know, at times, um, writing material that wasn't meant to be taken literally even back then now you know that then and, and and distinguishing between the two i think is 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 interesting because I, I i i would guess that the the garden of eden story adam and eve i would guess that that was meant to be taken literally whereas um Whereas, like, you know, God is seated um, in a throne. I mean, I'm not sure about that. So anyway, so like that's going to, um, because in order to understand God, we have to understand God's scripture. In order to understand that, uh, God's scripture, we have to, um, we have to understand, um, you know, the, this distinction between, you know, a literal interpretation and a metaphorical, um, you know, instructive kinds of, um, kinds of descriptions of, of, of reality. Um, all right, so what else? Yeah, I was, you know, you know what happened? Um, as I've explained, I've been experiencing a change, a positive change, whereas like I'm, I'm feeling closer to God um, feeling God's presence more, and again, this to a great extent, it's about this um, this television series. It's not just about this. You know, I'm, I'm attending so many more Torah classes. You know, uh, with, with my synagogue than I had before, and and that that has to be um, major influence too. But but one way this is um, 
taking effect is that um, sometimes I um, I have let's say unkind, um, immoral, um, you know, unvirtuous thoughts about whatever, you know, I mean, if I watch TV and I watch some politicians <laughs> talking, you know, that's going to bring it out. But, uh, but, um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm catching myself and, and it was about actually this, you know, obsessing about this bass thing, you know, you know, buying the bass amp and, you know, like I was, uh, I found myself much more actively resisting, you know, these, these, less than um, noblest thoughts, you know, that, that, that had I a free will, I would not have been engaged in them, you know, because like, you know, they were unpleasant to it, a certain extent. So I found myself asking God to stop putting those thoughts into my mind, you know, which is interesting. Um, but uh, let's see. Which, which, no, no, it, 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 it's not, it's more than interesting. It's important because that that's kind of like an indication of spiritual growth. Whereas, like before, you know, I guess my tendency might have been to to not want to feel those feelings and, and and think of those thoughts that I didn't really um, admire all that much. But um, but before, I, it's not like I. I was actively addressing God, you know, saying, God, you know, what are you doing? You know, don't, don't feed me these thoughts. You know, you want to manifest your will through me. Just like pick some more pleasant, uh, productive, virtuous thoughts. And, uh, and I think that's good. You know, I think, you know, I mean, we could say that to ourselves under the free will paradigm that, yeah, like, you know, you know, I, I got to stop doing this. But, um, but, um, you know, to, it, it's, it, you know, again, from my perspective, it's just more accurate to, um, to address God with, with this request since, you know, fundamentally that, you know, I'm not, you know, choosing. And again, like, you know, another kind of like a argument against this idea of free will. Why, why in the world would I like, you know, one o'clock, in the morning when I want to get to sleep, be obsessing, freely willing to obsess about buying a bass amp, you know, checking out videos and reading articles. And uh, I mean, I didn't want to do that. So how am I, you know, so whose will was that? That was my free will doing something that I wouldn't, didn't want to do, I, which, which then invites kind of like the, the, um, the exploration. Well, let's say, let's say we, we, explore this under the, the premise that we do have a free will. Well, it seems like if, if that's the case, it seems we have more than one will because there's a part of me that, that obviously wanted to, um, to explore these, these base amps and, and, and you know, get this information to, to, to reach some clarity on, on what I was gonna do. And obviously there's a part of me that didn't, that, that felt, you know, like I was saying to myself, I, I don't have to do this, you know, tonight I can, do, I can do this tomorrow, next week, whatever. It just wasn't urgent. So, so even, you know, within this, this, this um, context of, of, of our having a free will, you know, we would have to acknowledge that there are like parts of us that, that conflict with each other. You know, so what do we, we have free wills and, have, and it's, again, the perfect example is like, you've seen this, like, you know, I remember growing up and in cartoons that you'd have like, you know, a cartoon character d debating between doing something good and something bad. And so you had the little angel on one shoulder saying, you know, don't do it. It's not the right thing to do, you know, and you had the little devil's like, go ahead, go for it. <laughs> and, and, uh, so yes, we apparently have these two parts of our mind. I mean, you know, in Freudian terms, the id, the, the, the superego, you know, but, you know, that's how it feels. Um, so now, all right, God apparently wants me to just like um, talk about this. So like, we have to acknowledge that, all right, let's say even we, we, we stay with that, you know, that, um, that construction of, of, of having, let's say, two, you know, um, 
parts of our will. Let's say one part wants to do what's virtuous, what's right. Another part wants to do what feels good. And that I think is a very accurate understanding of, of, of our two wills if we want to describe them in our way. Because like our most fundamental motivations for what we, why we do anything are virtue and happiness and actually happiness is, is 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 supreme i mean like the only reason we um we do anything that's virtuous is because we predict it's going to make us happier it's going to make the people that we um we care about happier so um so so here's the here's the again this is like the, here I'm, I'm i'm pointing out a problem with the, with the free will um mindset that will ultimately, you know, like, like I, I, don't, I don't remember what happened um, last night. I think what happened was it, it got so um, uncomfortable, you know, it felt so obsessive and I really wanted to get some sleep, whatever. I didn't want to be doing that. That if it got so unpleasant, I finally said, forget it. You know, like so I turned off the, uh, the um, you know, I, I think I was um, on a phone, whatever. So, um, but, but the point that I'm trying to make is that um, either could have won. You know, there, there was a part of me that, that wanted to continue searching until I found it because I didn't find an answer. You know, I'm still like trying to figure out what, what base to, to get and uh, an amp rather. Um, and so if, if, you can, if you can understand how we might not have the ability to to say oh yeah i'm going to have the virtue part of me win over the um the pleasure part of me at this particular moment you know if you realize that you know sometimes and perhaps usually hopefully we have that ability we don't have it all, always you know there's sometimes where the pleasure will take um, precedence. Or there's some times where it's like, it's false virtue. We're, we're, we're trying to be too good or falsely good. And we should be, you know, deriving more pleasure at that moment. Um, and again, so like, you know, these, this, th these decisions are made for us. All right, so this, so now I'll return it to God because like, you know. Um, so, I mean, this is God like being the puppeteer, God, you know, God, we're, we're, we're God's puppets or God's marionettes. And this is God's show, God's story, God's movie, however you want to describe it. And um, for our entertainment, for God's entertainment, God has us um, do a lot of things that, that don't make sense, uh, that we can't understand, that may not be... Uh, all that pleasant, um, but but you know it, it's just it's a different reality. Understanding that um, that God's will is the only will, you know you see other people differently. You, you, it evokes more compassion. You know somebody does or says something that you disagree with, you think is wrong. You know, your first reaction might be, oh, this is a terrible person. You know, the person should be punished, whatever. And then, you know, you, um, the realization, because that's what happened, happened with me. Like there's, you know, this, this we're, we're so conditioned to believe in free will that our first reaction is, yes, the person did it in free will. But, you know, like, so like I'm, I, I get better and better, you know, over years, I guess, of, of, of reminding myself of being reminded by God more accurately that the person didn't, that we don't have a free will. So, so yes, the next reaction is like, all right, yes, would, would the person or would we, you know, do may not always be right, but when we don't attribute those actions fundamentally to them, we're more understanding, we're more compassionate, you know, and, and we can attribute it to God because like, we can't hurt God, you know, I don't think, you know, I mean, like, no, come on, you know, God is like, you know, 2.2 2, 2 to 3 trillion galaxies, and, and, and you know, that's probably just a very small fraction of God, so like, you know, to blame God, I'm not sure, um, and I try not to blame God either, I try to absolve God also by saying, well, there could never have been a beginning where God chose to, uh, to have a course of, of events, and I know that's a bit, you know, abstract, or whatever, but it, kind of, it works, you know, it works kind of well but but 
again, to, to, to hold, you know, God fundamentally, you know, credit, credit worthy when, when, when we do what's good and blame worthy when we don't, it makes it so much easier to accept and, and, and be good to, to others and to ourselves, you know, to, and this is, you know, the, we, we try this, you know, like to be non-judgmental. What, is, what does it mean to be non-judgmental? It means to like, to, yes, like somebody does something, you know, we, we, we acknowledge that it might be right or it might be wrong morally, you know, but we don't pass judgment, you know, we don't, you know, maybe, yeah, that's a different kind, kind of like a consideration that we choose not to judge. Sometimes it's, you know, it, it kind of like seems um, more apparent than other, other times, but, but the reason for that, why do we, why do we um, have this idea of not judging others? Even though most people don't realize it, it really derives from, from the understanding that, well, we didn't create ourselves, that we all, we as human beings have many failings, you know, so that evokes compassion. It evokes understanding. It, it, it brings us closer together. Um, and it's not like we don't have this experience. Let's say, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're around like a, a very, a toddler, you know, you're an adult and, and uh, the toddler uh, does something wrong, you know, just morally wrong, takes a, a toy and then box another kid over the head with it or something. I don't know. Um, you know, blame that toddler because the toddler has no idea what, the, what, what he or she is doing. And, and, and so like you're able to love that toddler more and then just be good to them. Not, you know, uh, yeah, you might have to punish them a little. I don't know, but, but it, it's far less. And, 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 you know, you feel far better about the interaction than, than to, to, to really condemn a toddler for, for anything they do. All right. Well, that's all God has <laughs> for today because, uh, you know, I've got 46 seconds left. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to try to do more shows with Andy, probably maybe another, um, another couple this weekend coming up. Who knows? Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to see, you know, if, if hopefully God will have me like invite guests to be, you know, on this show with me, because that, that would be a good idea. God has me being very lazy in that way. He just, you know, she just like doesn't <laughs> motivate me to do that. I think it'd be a better show to, to have more people on here. So hopefully that'll happen. So, all right. So catch this every Monday through Friday, White Plains Community Media, five o'clock, um, uh, Verizon 45, Optimum, uh, 76. All right. See, see you next time. God willing. Thanks.